Hey everyone, it's Dustin Stelzer from Journey to Master, and in today's episode, we are finally going to read the responses that the Eaton engineers replied about arc fault, dual function, and ground fault breakers. So those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, um, I actually sent a tweet to Eaton, and I said, you know, look, there's a whole bunch of us electricians that are in some Facebook groups and talk on Twitter, and there's a lot of, like, misunderstandings and just questions about how this technology works, why sometimes LED, you know, lights that are mixed with incandescent lights on a circuit trip the arc fault breakers or, you know, just weird stuff like that. So in this episode, we hear from the Eaton engineers. All right, guys, so here are the answers. There were 11 questions that I got uh, that I feel like were the most worthwhile questions. Um, some of the questions that were asked in some of these groups, um, there were like silliness or, you know, just uh, shit that I, I don't think really belonged, like wasting their time with. So I'm just gonna read them all off. Uh, these are all gonna be located on the Journey to Master vlog. So if you go to journeytomaster.com, you can actually sit and read all of this stuff. Um, and on the YouTube video, I'm gonna post all this stuff underneath it as well. Um, so question number one, will they come out with a dual function type CL classified breaker? They have them in uh, AFCI, which is the Eaton CL120 CAF. Um, Eaton said they may consider releasing a classified version of the AFGF if there is enough demand. The testing requirements for classified breakers per UL are very labor intensive and expensive. Eaton has yes, has to test the breakers in every family of load center across all manufacturers to verify the breaker and load center will work together as a system. All right. Uh, question two, why do all brands twist the neutral pigtail? And is there any downside to straightening them or cutting them short? The answer is the twisted or coiled pigtail is simply to fit the breakers in the packaging and in the most efficient way figured. Uh, when installing the breakers, the pigtail can be kept coiled to allow the ability to extend it or keep it short without the need to custom fit via cutting and reskinning. There is no harm caused by cutting the pigtail or to extend using a wire nut and an extra piece of wire as allowed by your local AHJ. Um, question number three, is there any new developments being made for motors? They need to have more tolerance built into the AFCIs for motor circuits. Nuisance tripping on refrigerator, freezer, and window AC units gets old really fast. Maybe different rated AFCIs like the personnel and equipment GFCIs. So Eaton said, uh, current generation Eaton AFCI products have been designed to be the least susceptible to brush type universal motors that are inherently noisy due to the nature of their design. Our current product does a really good job at distinguishing the difference between the intended arcing inside the motor versus the dangerous unintended arcing situation. Eaton has a dedicated team of engineers that constantly looks to refine our algorithms to ensure compatibility with the new and existing appliances. Uh, question number four. I've noticed a lot of problems with mixed loads. LED and fluorescent on the same circuits. I've had a lot of problems with tripping when LED lights are on the same circuit as incandescent lights and especially with a ceiling fan. What gives? Their answer, we believe the real issue is the conducted emissions or noise being generated by the LED's electronic switching power supply more so than the mixed loads. Some LEDs are found to be exceeding the conducted emissions limits set by the FCC. That's interesting. This noise looks very similar to series arcing conditions, and if all conditions are met, the breaker may trip. The breaker also needs to have a minimum amperage of current flowing through it at the same time it recognizes the noise in order for its arc protection to kick in, which varies by manufacturer. Uh, which is probably why you see more issues when using other loads along with LEDs on the same circuit. LED does not draw much current, so the noise itself does not trip the breaker until you add more load, such as the incandescent bulb as you described. That's pretty interesting. Um, 
Someone said, please, uh, question number five. Someone said, please ask about the coordination of appliance manufacturers. I was interested in this one, actually. The breaker needs to know the signature of appliances that create arc like noises and know to ignore them. Some manufacturers ignore the need to make things that comply or inform breaker manufacturers. We end up with the requirement for arc detecting breakers, but manufacturers that make things that will cause trips which are not arcs. We need better coordination. How do they address this and do they even try? So Eaton says, Eaton's, Eaton designs our AFCI devices expecting that appliance manufacturers will adhere to the FCC regulations for conducting emissions. If there is a new appliance or device on the market that exceeds FCC limits, it may create an issue for inoperability. NEMA has designed a task force to align the AFCI manufacturers with the appliance manufacturers through AHAM, which is the Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers. This partnership is designed to set common design standards across both manufacturing groups. Uh, it also allows for direct connection between manufacturers if there are any inoperability issues between the specific brands. Question number six, why do some power tools, shop vacs especially, trip AFCIs? I know a lot of power tools have brushes which arc, but aren't the new combination AFCIs supposed to be smart enough to prevent tripping? These power tools, shop vacs and vacuum cleaners, use brush type universal motors which are inherently noisy due to the nature of the design. This noise looks almost identical to dangerous arcing conditions and sometimes could cause unwanted tripping in legacy AFCI devices. These devices can also have high inrush currents which can also be similar to an arcing event, that makes sense. The AFCI industry has continued to evolve its technology, get better at distinguishing the difference between the arcing inside the motor versus a dangerous, unintended arcing situation. Question number seven. I've had an issue with AFCI breakers and AFCI receptacles on the same circuit. They seem to chatter and trip each other. Uh, or if, you've, if you have any ballasted lights, LED especially, they make the lights go haywire. Also, I've seen the same with GFCI receptacles installed in the same circuit as a GFCI breaker. One keeps tripping the other. Only way to fix it in both circumstances is to remove one or the other. What's going on inside these things to make this happen? Their answer, we have not identified any broad issues with having redundant protection, whether by AFCI or GFCI on the same circuit. We have witnessed LED lights flickering, as you mentioned, but that typically occurs when the lighting control device is not compatible with the low voltage transformer or power supply and is not an issue with, an, with the AFCI device. I don't know if I agree with this one. From the stuff that I've seen, it's definitely not the LED. Uh, there's something going on with their technology, but I'm going to ask them more about that. It's essential that the dimmer is designated compatible for the type of light being powered as well as the power consumption of the circuit. Yeah. Question number eight. What are the characteristics of arcing? I keep seeing that term. AFCI devices detect characteristics of arc arcing and open the circuit, but no one seems to know what that means. Is it a sudden change in frequency, waveform shape, resistance, etc.? What's happening in the circuit during an arc? Like the voltage, the current, the resistance, frequency etc. What makes the breaker sense something wrong? Eaton says, there are two kinds of arcing, high current or parallel arcing and low current or series arc. Parallel arcing is an occurrence between two parallel conductors and has the two characteristics or a large current flow and no lag or lead of current relative to voltage. Current lags voltage for inductive loads and current leads voltage for capacitive loads. Series arcing is a little bit more involved. It includes a circuit that has a gap in one conductor, line or neutral, followed by a load wired in series. In the beginning of a half cycle, when the voltage difference between the line and neutral is small, no arcing occurs and no current flows. When the voltage potential across the gap becomes large enough during the half cycle, an arc is generated and current flows. As the half cycle nears its end, the voltage, the voltage potential drops and the arc stops. The high frequency noise generated by an arc is broadband, whereas the spectrum of high frequency noise generated by a non-arcing load is not uniform and has peaks and nulls depending on the load. AFCI breakers look for these characteristics to, de to detect an arc and safely trip. Question number nine. What are the most common issues you find or have complaints about with your AFCI versus GFCI breakers? Sometimes when retrofitting a house with uh, recessed lighting, I'll add a dimmer and get nothing but problems from arc faults. Uh, it's essential that the dimmer is rated for the type of light being powered. Well, duh. 
Uh, also need to verify that the LED or other lighting source has an FCC Part 15 Class B rating for consumer use. Class A devices are for commercial use only and usually do not have high frequency filtering built in which can cause interaction issues. That's kind of cool. I didn't know that. Um, tenth question. We recently talked about something very similar. Ran a dedicated circuit for a fireplace igniter because we were worried about the arc faults acting up on us. Technically this should be on an AFCI, but it wouldn't hold when the igniter arcs. Um, I've never seen this. I've put tons of fireplaces on arc faults and never seen this problem. It may be a, a brand manufacturing kind of thing, but, um, Eaton says they have not, uh, Eaton has not identified any issues with igniters. Typically the arc does not sustain long enough or have enough current flowing for a series arc detection to trip. Um, last question, number 11, why can't you combine neutrals on two different circuits without the AFCI tripping? They have to be on their own circuit to work. Is it that the added length of the combined neutral conductors changes the overall resistance, voltage drop, or is it sensing a difference in phase angles from jumping from 60 hertz to 160, from jumping from 60 hertz to 120 hertz suddenly? The reason for this is that some AFCI devices on the market have built-in ground fault protection. Therefore, you cannot share neutrals from two circuits. The breaker monitors the current flowing out on the black hot and current flowing back in on the white neutral conductor. If five amps leaves the breaker, five amps needs to return. If there are two neutrals tied together on the load side of a breaker, the return current is split in half coming back to the breaker and it will trip every time. It is also suggested not to combine neutrals because it can make troubleshooting more difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's an issue with the breaker trips, you must investigate all the branch circuits tied together. Yeah, but the NEC allows for multi-wire branch circuits. So um, that was all the questions. I have to say that I'm, I'm impressed. Like I'm not a shill for, you know, <laughs> for Eaton or Cutler Hammer. Um, I'm not, you know, like telling everybody to go buy them. I, uh, honestly, they were the only people to reply. So I sent a couple of feelers out to Siemens, to Eaton, to GE. I got no replies other than uh, Eaton. Eaton, were the, Eaton was the only company that actually reached out. And not only did they do it, like within the same day when I asked them, I said, hey, I've got a podcast, I'd like to, ask you guys some questions that a bunch of us and some of our Facebook groups have. And, uh, the second that I sent it to them, they sent something back. They, you know, sent, uh, sent all my questions over to engineering. Engineering got back to me really quickly and, uh, said, you know, give me a few days or give us a few days. So they have a master electrician on staff too, that, uh, helped participate with this. So I want to say thank you to Lanson D. Relia. I know I'm butchering my last name, dude. I'm so sorry. You just have a weird last name and I'm not a grammar guy. I it's R E L Y E A. It's like rely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Cool as hell. Like this dude was the one that I communicated with the most. Uh, he's the product line manager. And then Robert Bob E. Handick was the master electrician. So um, I, those are really the only two people that I that I spoke with. Um, but either way, like they spent a lot of time giving pretty technical answers, and I think like thoroughly answering the question. So I really appreciate it. If you guys have any other questions, uh, or if you feel like something wasn't answered correctly, or you you know you got anything, let me know. Uh, leave a comment below or get on the journey to master Facebook page and like, you know, write something, complain, bitch that I didn't do a good enough job, whatever it is. Anyways, I uh, hope you guys liked it. Have a good one and I'll see you on the next episode.